Hi there, welcome back to my channel. What if you did not inherit money from your rich parents or marry a rich partner? What if you want to be a first person in your family to become a millionaire? Can you still become a millionaire even with an average household income? I'm going to share with you five lessons that I learned after I became a millionaire and some of these lessons can be implemented by you to build a strong foundation of your financial health and be able to thrive in any economic turbulence. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell. My name is Koi Ann and I am a real estate investor since 2001. I achieved my financial independence when I was 35 after consistently investing in cash flow properties. Lesson number one is have your investment plan. I started to develop my investment plan as soon as I landed a corporate job. I was so happy that I could have such a high saving rate after I pay for all my personal expenses. I got exposure to putting portion of my earning into my company matching 401k retirement plan and that event opened my interest to learn more about the equity investment world. Having an investment plan allows me to see my financial journey at any given moment. I was able to model the impact of any increase in my income and the consequent increased rate of saving. With my investment plan, I knew what it would take to reach financial independence in less than 15 years. I felt super happy that I could save 30% of my take-home income to invest. I also learned that if I can earn a 10% return on my money invested in the S&P 500, then I can achieve my financial independence by the time I reach 40. Having your investment plan is like having a roadmap that allows you to see clearly your income, your expenses, and what you are saving each month. It is the basics of your financial modeling. The saving that you can invest in different asset classes that you have committed to learn and understand well to invest your hard-earned money into. Your investment plan can be, can be developed by you and it is unique to you. Having an investment plan will help you to focus on making your finances manageable and achievable. At some point, you may have a spouse and even children. This will change your investment plan and risk tolerance. You will know how much you would have to save to build great financial health for a family of four or even a family of six people. Your investment plan is not a straight line or static, but it is a roadmap for you to track and course correct however you see fit in order to reach your design outcomes or your financial destiny. Lesson number two is invest consistently. To grow your investment, you want to invest as early as you can and invest consistently because you want your invested money to earn compound interest over time. You may have heard the quote, it is not timing the market, but it is time in the market. Let's look at one example to see the power of the compound interest. When Sarah invested $20,000 a year when she was 25 years old, and by the time she is 45 years old, she would have about $1.39 million. On the other hand, Heather started to invest 20000 when she was 35 years old. By the time she is 45 years old, she only has 402000 Sarah invested 10 years earlier than Heather. That is 10 years times 20000 or 200000 more. 
But because of the compound interest, Sarah ended up earning 992,000 more than Heather. That is a huge difference in return when you have your money invested it early in the market and the compounding effect may its play its magic. Once you learn one investment skill well, you should invest consistently and not try to tame the market. But instead, again, focus on time in the market. You need to anticipate that market will go up and down. But over the long period of time, it will always go up. So if you keep timing the market, you will likely miss on some big wins. When you look at one investment vehicle, you should look at the average return in that asset class over its 20, 30, or even 40 years period. Then this data will allow you to make your investment decision holistically. The S&P 500 has an average return of 10.5% from 1957 through 2021. This data I got from into, uh, Investopedia.com. So when I create my investment plan, if I invest my money in the S&P 500, then I would use 10% as the percentage of return in my calculation for, to project my long-term investment growth in this holding. The average return on real estate investment based more on my own projects in the last 20 years is between 16 to 36 percent depending on the real estate asset classes, their location, and how much leverage I had for each project. So when I decide to invest in cash flow real estate projects, I will use 16 percent as an estimated percentage return in my investment planning. I do not tame the real estate uh, market. I consistently invest it in cash flow real estate when I find the real estate projects that makes financial sense to add to my real estate portfolio. It is ongoing and that's what I mean by invest consistently. Lesson number three is increase your saving rate. In my early years, I understand there are basically two ways that I can increase my available capital to invest. Number one is by increasing my income and number two is by reducing or cutting my discretionary expenses. How? I become a relentless learner. I always eager to acquire high value skills that in turn increase my income at my corporate jobs. Constantly looking for new ways to improve when I had my own mortgage company. I became a mortgage broker specializing in one specific niche, assisting clients with credit challenges and bankruptcy in their profile to secure a really good mortgage. This specialization allowed me to help more people and at the same time yielded me more business with higher profitability. I highly advise everyone who is currently working, regardless of your industry, to look for room to grow your special life field. When you do things most people either don't or cannot do, you are in high demand and as such you will be nicely compensated. When your income increase, your saving rate will increase accordingly and you would have more capital to invest sooner. If you are not naturally practical spenders, then it's a great habit for you to keep track of your monthly expenses for a few months by using an Excel spreadsheet, Mint.com, or any other online tools out there. You will be surprised by what you would learn and find some big expenses that you don't really need to cut and save thousands of dollars yearly to go straight to your savings. A couple of the biggest expenses that most of us have are eating out often or monthly car payments. Because you buy a new car every few years, 
if you have these expenses, you can easily save at least 1,000 to 2,000 per month. And in a year, you can save between 12,000 to 24,000. My husband and I are naturally practical spenders. We drive our cars for at least 12 to 15 years before we will trade an old one for a newer one. So we could save 50% of our take-home income to invest very early in our marriage. However, when we have increased our income, we tend to keep our lifestyle constant. This way, most of the increase in income goes straight to our savings and go straight to our investment. Lesson number four is invest in yourself. Regardless of what investment vehicles you will use to build strong financial health, your investment plan will change based on your personal circumstance and needs. It's wise to stay current and learn new skills to preserve your assets and protect them. At some point, one investment vehicle may reach its peak. Then you can learn new investment skills so you can reallocate in order to grow your assets while keeping your risk level in check. For example, there are many cash flow real estate investment classes. You may take a few years to master one skill at a time, and as you grow older, you may want to invest in more stable and recession-proof real estate assets. This may include assets that will prosper regardless of the economic cycle or shift the focus from heavier appreciation to heavier cash-on-cash -cash return. Given 35% of the U.S. populations are renters who will always need a place to live, Housing is a necessity. And lesson number five is automate your investment accounts. As you finish your investment plan, you know your monthly income, your monthly expenses. The difference between the two is your savings and your capital available to invest. You should allocate them into six different accounts. I will tell you why in a couple minutes. You set up six automated transfers each month, one account for necessary spending, one account for long-term investment, one account for emergency fund, one account for the self-educational fund, and one account for fund money, and one account for impact and giving. When you have money in different accounts, it is easier to stay the course and spend what is available in that account. Once it's gone, you know that you cannot spend any more. The percentage show on each account is an example only. You can allocate the percentage based on your own individual investment plan. I learned this technique at one of the T. Half Eckers Millionaire Mastermind events. I hope you can use any of these five lessons above as I just shared. So if you like this content, please be sure to click the like and share this video so YouTube can replay this video for others to learn. Let me know in the comment below what lessons you learn after become financially independent and a millionaire. Thank you so much for watching. Let's learn, invest, and make an impact. Ciao!